hello and welcome back uh, to our third interview segment with the Mark Tresser trio. Uh, we now have with us the man himself, Mr. Mark Tresser. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you for being here. Sure, thank you. And uh, we want to take a look at his approach on using the bass in these sonic explorations. So Mark, if you... Yeah, so... Uh, gosh, there's so many, so many things to talk about, but I think as Matthias mentioned and I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, it's we have this sonic approach that's common between all three of us, this kind of experimental, investigative approach to our instruments where uh, a bass is not just bass function, it's a world of color. Mm -hmm. I was, uh, when I heard Jimi Hendrix as a kid mm -hmm. play with feedback, I realized that that was... <laughs> Just like playing Ponticello, and then and then and when I heard these words are called baitos, and ah, that's the Foxy Lady interval, <laughs> and that really what made me say, well, well, this is cool, but this if I play like this, if I play with anyone else, you can't hear it. So that sort of set me on a path of like, well, wouldn't it be cool if? I can make these things that are normally not loud if I could mm -hmm. blow them up. So it started out with recording with multiple microphones and then starting out improvising and then finding myself having to always return to the same place until I got to a point where I really had to actually map out what was happening on the bass. So like for every equal tempered half step, I mapped where every harmonic was. And then where every bitone was, what was, which is the back side of the string. And then learning how those, so okay, so I'm going too fast, I can see. So, uh, uh, so, so for example, okay, for example, sorry. So this is the ninth, this is the ninth harmonic that exists at eight different places on the string. Hmm. Most people are not aware of that. But through this mapping process, I've learned about that. And so the bitones is the same principle, the equal subdivision of a string or fundamental. So, so if I play this length, yeah. amplified by these pickups, that's the same pitch. If I do this side, it's an octave lower. And then if I do this one, it's an octave and a fifth lower. So all of a sudden, we're, and if I do the next one, it's two octave lower. So then we, we're getting a construction which is like uh, an inversion uh, of a harmonic series, like a subharmonic series. So all of a sudden, the world is opening up. So one note is not one note, but many different sounds. Mm -hmm. And that seemed to be like, and I, it's just sort of like one sound is not one sound. Oh, it's yeah. it's, it's, it's a, a universe. And when I heard Demon, when we first improvised together, I said, man, this guy is hearing exactly, we're hearing the same way. We're approaching it differently, but it's a very common approach. And so I think we met in probably 1987-88. I was playing a concert with uh, Braxton, Anthony Braxton at the Navy Factory, and he said, hey, Finchie called me up and said, I got this duo concert, we'll improvise. So we did, and it was like, after hearing him play and how complimentary our processes were, yeah. I said, I'm in, I'm, he's going to put, in all the groups I'm going to put together, he's going to be the kingpin, I'm going to put them at the center <laughs> of it. So it was first a trio with Robert Dick and Jerry Hemingway, a quartet, called Tambastics, then I had a quartet, a quintet, with Theo Blackman, the great singer, and Dave Douglas on trumpet, and uh, Phil Keeney on, Phil Haynes, excuse me, on drums. Mm -hmm. And then um, uh, we did several other things. I can't even remember all of them, but we've been doing all these things. Then we started playing duo, and... Uh, you and Demon. Demon, yeah, we started mm -hmm. playing duo. And then, you know, about, or not long after I met him, in the late 80s, and I probably met Matthias around 1990. I was mm -hmm. playing uh, at um, in, in Zurich at, Mo at uh, the Miller's Theater. 
and as um, Matthias is a generous soul, he invited us all over to dinner, dining, convivial things is sort of a thread that brings us all together. And, uh, and then I saw him with his flutes, and he had a, this contrabass flute hanging on a wire, and I said, he's a madman just like us. <laughs> so uh, it was actually his idea, well, I'd love to play with them, and after we met, uh, uh, while well, we were on tour together, and so, uh, but we have this common commonalities that we see in a very expansive. Right. But what I liked is like, what somebody would expect is that you would say, oh, we, we play in a similar way, but you said, no, we listen in a, we hear in a similar yeah, way. Yeah, 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 we just sort of he hear the multiplicity of our yeah. instruments. Yeah. And so, you know, he's dealing with a string. A string is a string is a string. There, you know, there's just, you know, there's, of course there are differences, but there are more commonalities, just mm -hmm. like there are more commonalities between people than there are differences. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it was, it was a no-brainer that we had to do stuff together. Yeah, yeah. And now, yeah. you know, this has been over 20, this is 25 years now, and, and, and we're still doing it, and we live in different continents, and, you know, but we still make it happen, which is just... Uh, is a, you know, these friendships you make in music, they're almost, they're as valuable or maybe more valuable or as valuable as the music itself because it's mm -hmm. sort of like, here we are, we're doing this because we want to do it. Mm -hmm. Well, we feel it's important. Now, this, what we're doing does not, is, I mean, it's, so, it's if you, in terms of the, the big cultural picture, this is esoteric. But this is, this is the ether, this is the juice of, the details that uh, keep me fascinated and forever fuels, yeah, fuels me, and I, I, you know, I, you know, I'm seventy, I'm seventy years old, and I'm thrilled that I'm ex, I'm more, I'm as ex, more excited than I've ever been about playing the bass, and so much has to do with these friendships yeah. and this collaboration, and so like this bass here is a collaboration with uh, this great luthier and old friend mm -hmm. named uh, Kent McLegan and. Uh, the trio in round, round 2000 uh, played in um, Denver, uh, Boulder, Colorado, mm -hmm. and I didn't, we didn't have the money to bring a bass, so we got this. Uh, Kent lent me a bass, because he lived there, and I had these pickups that were the precursor to this. I guess I haven't explained this yet, so let me, let me step back a place. So I used to have magnetic pickups that hung over the, the headstock of the bass an idea that I learned from a guitarist named Tom North. And mm -hmm. It was the same idea that guitarist Fred Frith, all, who became later a friend as well, and a gifted colleague uh, uh, told me about, uh, showed me his thing. So what, what it allowed to, uh, to do is to take the neck pitches on one string I get three pitches simultaneously mm -hmm. and it gives me this microtonal yes. spectrum of sound so the idea I always laugh when you said well there are only 12 pitches in music mm -hmm. I don't think of it that way I'd see like you know this gradient perspective of course you know Western music is based on dividing the octave into 12 equal sounds mm -hmm. but the way uh, we investigate all our instruments is but really much more based on the physics of the sound as yeah. well as we marry the you know the physics of the sound with you know traditional western harmony as well so it's trying to find the balances there and where where is the juice and again like all this exploration is to find out where is the music yeah. and so that's the really only thing i find i mean i love the the, the process but the thing that's important to me is where is the music yeah. and this is where you find out when you get together in performance and play it with your friends and you try to, you know, transcend the, the difficulties of the tasks. So you get to the next step where it speaks and projects and becomes something that you feel that 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 moves you because it's already it's it's always like it's not a known entity. I'm I, 
I can smell, I said this figuratively, I can smell something as good around the corner. <laughs> and it's not like, and I'm following that. Yeah. That's always the same thing that's been since I was a kid. So that, I feel lucky that I'm still, you know, fascinated with those things that excited me when I first started. But so like, I brought up Kent McLagan. Mm -hmm. He built me, first of all, he built me pickups built into the fingerboard. So when I just demonstrated, there's a set of four handwell magnetic pickups under the string here. So like, now this, if it, this, I'm just playing a note. Now if I release the pressure, so that you know, this is a this is pitched. I, I call it pitch noise, but it is pitch, and it's just a detail to the sound that uh, you know I find rich and flavorful. I'm using these food analogies, but you know, there's just you know, I, there's there's some there's some there's something useful there. And you don't have the, you know, the couple bars. Yes, and also there, there's a set of pickups under the, in the middle of the neck too, so. This is acoustic. So anyhow, this is, you know, it's, anytime you add something to the instrument, there's a whole new level of complexity of how to amplify it and endless uh, issues of how to bring it to life with, without noise. This other thing yeah, those that uh, in 2015, 14, I asked, can, can you build me, a, build me a bass? And so uh, he, he said, sure. And I said, but I have this idea. Uh, and I said, I have an, ins an idea for an instrument that would be a cross between a kalimba, mm -hmm. uh, the African thumb piano in mm -hmm. Ibera, and this instrument that I saw that a, com a composer who I studied with named Robert Erickson at the University of California called stroke rods, that were these large metal rods that you play that were joined in the, in the center of the rod, and you play them with stroked, rosined, gloves and it was just this kind of ringing that was you know otherworldly and I said can you make me something that's a cross between those now we did not have a definite idea of what that was mm -hmm. and you know again these friendships are they're the most valuable thing because you know he with an idea like that in addition he's making me a base so <laughs> um, he came up with this is the the 11th iteration, we, there are 11 different ones. This is probably, uh, this is probably a iteration number nine of the times. We've tried different constructions, different placements, different metals, different numbers of things, different tunings. Yeah. So, so these rods, but that, that's, you know, that's not a, it's almost like a hurdy-gurdy in a way, but then if you, the, the overtones are unusual because instead of being an octave like on a string, yeah. the first overtone is. Wow. It's like a, a, ten, a, a just two octaves and a minor six, and then above that, an eleventh above that. Now, if I put pressure on this, it goes sub audio. We're talking about beats. And if this is amplified, it can become, it can be really, really powerful. And that's, uh, you know, that's the, the joy of working with a, a, a gifted recording engineer who amplifies these, mm. who, or, you know, use the recording medium for what it does best. And it can, you can blow up these sounds and sculpt them. Yeah. And so the, I just finished, uh, and it was just released a uh, new solo CD called Times of Change, and I mm. uh, and I worked with this engineer uh, Alexandra Smith, and we she did an amazing recording with us. And it was like we sculpted this record. We recorded groups of improvisations in 2019. We edited them. We she uh, we we um, and we did this in, together and in, together and separately. 
And then uh, in 2000, this last year in August, I had kept maybe a five string bass, which has one extra string and I yeah. used it with a low C and then a low B string, but also I retuned it with a high C string. So we're, we're always in this exploration. But it's almost so, like also an intersection between science and music. Well, exactly. Well, that, 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 it's always been that, actually. <laughs> I didn't know. Yeah, I mean, that, you know, that, 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 that is the, you know, tuning systems is science. Anyhow, yes. So, yeah, I do feel like a, a nerd supreme. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful way to end it on. Then, then. Thanks so much. To thank you very, very much for opening your base to us. Sure, basically. sure. Yes. So that's, that's, that's wonderful. Can't that's wait wonderfully to hear gratifying. the concert. And uh, yes, and thank you very much for tuning in again. And uh, please remember the live stream is open at 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. today. And you can witness live the recording performance of the Mark Dresser Trio. Thank you and see you then. <laughs>